slash Burger Bob. Welcome back to my tiny closet of despair. Um, someone called the cops on us again, so gotta play in the practice room, I guess. It's not a huge deal, I just like to be able to just play in my living room and not have the cops call me. Anyway, maybe some of you guys noticed during that little clip of me playing uh, Scales and Thurs, dotted 8 sixteenths, kind of badly, that my horn looks a little different. Hmm. For instance, this is the bell that I usually play on. Wait, I didn't just take it off. That's strange. Wait, this is the tuning slide I usually play with. That's weird. And hey, this is the slide I... No, this isn't my... That's not the slide I usually play with. Don't worry. That's still on my horn. So, this video is all about upgrades and uh, changes to my horn. So, ta-da! I have a screw bell. Look at that. And I have a fancy different colored tuning slide. Look at that. That's really the only change here. So I've had this uh, 1980s bell for a little while. It came with a 50B that I think I showed you guys a little bit of a while back. Um, it was a pretty good 50B, but I kind of I took the whole thing apart and kind of sold off all the other parts, but kept the bell because the bell um, I thought was pretty good. Um, it's not amazing. It's kind of beat up. It's not very pretty. Um, but after like selling the rest of the parts of that horn, the bell is basically free. So I was like, why don't I keep this bell as a backup and or get it cut so I have a screw bell. So I eventually finally did that and I went to John Sandhagen, had him cut it down, put a ring on it, and now I have a screw bell 50 bell. And it's pretty crazy. Also when I did that, um, the bell fittings that I had on my instrument were old style, like thumb screw kind of things. And those are not like super conducive to like having a bunch of bells set up for it. So I had him put on OE Thayer setups, which means he had to do a whole bunch of random stuff. And in the process of that, I had him rebuild my tuning slide because this tuning slide is the one that came with my horn. I've used it this whole time because um, it's the only one that would fit. Um, the tubes were totally out of alignment, um, and actually this top one was like just built super badly and was like scrunched into some of the other stuff. So he took this apart, rebuilt it, um, and now the tubes are parallel. And when you do that, and you set up the bell so that it fits the parallel um, tubes, I can finally fit in other tuning slides. So now I'm using my fancy Hule, um tuning slide, uh, which is seamed copper. Yes, it is seamed copper. It's like one big taper instead of uh, several other tapers. Um, and it plays pretty well. I don't know if it's like way better than my stock tuning slide, um, but I thought I'd give it a shot with my screw bell. Just like totally change things up and play with this for a while. And I really like the setup. I don't know how it sounds to you guys. Um, it's definitely different than my stock bell, which is a Corporation um, 50 bell, which is kind of light. It's not super light, but it's pretty light. And uh, this horn has, or this feet, uh, this bell has a lot of feedback. It's got a lot of color to it. Um, it can get kind of bright. I feel like I like that. Um, this bell has less feedback because more of the energy is being directed away from me, thanks to this. And it maybe just sounds a little bit darker, a little less, uh, a little less bright at high volumes. I'm not really sure. But it doesn't really seem to suffer at all when I'm playing soft. Um, the only cons to having all this stuff changed is now my horn is even heavier. Um, these OE Thayer fittings, which are not, you know, ultra heavy, they're heavier. And then having the ring, which adds three and a half ounces to the bell, way out here, makes the horn heavier. Um, this horn has always been really heavy because it has stainless steel Thayers and heavy ball tubing and all this stuff. But most of that weight is concentrated around the valves. And having the, the weight here, it's not a huge deal because it's kind of just towards you. It's at the bottom of the instrument. It's also balancing it out, so that's not a big deal. But when you add weight farther up the horn, around here and at the, the uh, screw for the screw bell, now the weight is towards the top of the horn, so it wants to do this. I just did that on the slide, actually. And when it's in the screw bell, it's towards the front, too. So it's in, like, the worst possible place. You don't want it to be like this. Um, it's still balanced. It's just heavy now. So that's definitely a trade-off. 
I got this screw bell because I want to be able to travel with my instrument more easily. Right now, I have a Marcus Bonnet case that fits in almost every overhead. It's pretty light. Um, it's pretty small for a case. It's about as small as you can get. But sometimes you still can't fly with it. I'm going to Europe twice this year, and those airlines are constantly like, hey, you can bring an instrument if it's the size of a violin. It's like, well, that's great. Mine's not, and I'm not going to check my instrument. It's going to get destroyed if you have to check your instrument. So. Um, I haven't gotten this yet. I probably will soon. I have to go see if it fits. I'm going to get a screw bell case because the whole point of this, other than making the bell play different, which is definitely one of the points, is that when you take off the flare of the horn like this, all of a sudden um, the bell section is pretty flat. You know, there's nothing sticking out very far. The whole thing is maybe just a few inches deep. So that's very flat. This by itself, also just a couple inches. So when you put this like in here in a case, all of a sudden the whole case is like the depth of a viola case. It's so much smaller now. And yes, I can play like this. Maybe I'll do that in a later video. Um, but the point is the screwbell case. I had that funny uh, April uh, Fool's video about my new Marcus Bonnet travel case, which is my wife's uh, bassoon case. The screwball case is not a whole lot bigger than that case, which is very small. So all of a sudden, you have this tiny little thing that you can just fit on your back. Um, not that you can't do that with a stock case as well, um, but airline people are just not gonna care at all that you're bringing this tiny little thing on the plane. So all of a sudden, it's very easy to fly with your instrument. And just travel with it in general. It's really easy to carry around a screwball horn. Um, the problem is, I have to go check and see if my the rest of my instrument will fit in the Marcus Bonnet screwball case. This might stick out too far, so I might have to take it off whenever I travel with it. We'll see. Um, I'll check on that later. Anyway, so there's my changes. I have. And I brought that other slide because now I basically have two entire setups um, with this valve section. I have two bells that both fit on this. I have two tuning slides that both fit on this. I need to be over here for you guys to see. Two tuning slides. And then I have two slides that both fit on this. So I have two 50 bells, one screw bell, one knot, two tuning slides, one uh, copper seam tuning slide, one stock with a super long top tube, and then one dual bore slide and one not dual bore slide. I'm not sure if any of that really helps me in the long run to have all these options, but it is pretty neat for now. And I'll let you guys know how the screw bell feels. I've only played it for a couple days now, so I can't really tell you. Um, I like it, and I don't think it's a whole lot worse than my normal bell. So thanks guys. If you have any questions about this stuff, let me know in the comments. Um, I think that's just about all the news I have for you guys. See you guys next time.